What's going on YouTube? It's Ganimo and welcome back to our channel. We have some breaking news today. Just a couple hours ago, Senate approved a $484 billion stimulus package to help funding of community banks, hospitals, and small businesses, as well as increasing testing for COVID-19. So we're going to jump right into it. You guys know that drill. Gingerly tap that like button and let's get started. So on April 16th, 2020, the SBA announced that they were no longer accepting any additional loans for their PPP program as part of their first stimulus package. Why? They ran out of funds. So a lot of different small business owners found themselves in the streets protesting because they found out that bigger corporations were able to get their hands on that money before they did, even though they applied earlier in the process. Why? Different banks, such as Chase Bank, were actually audited recently by the SBA and they found that they were processing bigger loan amounts for bigger corporations because they were making more lender fees on those loans. Some examples are Shake Shack, which was approved for $10 million, Ruth Chris Steakhouse, which was approved for $20 million. Now that left business owners in fumes because they were not able to rescue their businesses in a time of need. Now, where does that leave us? If you have plans to apply for the new stimulus money and apply for a PPP loan for your business, make sure that you guys read the fine print, consult with your lawyer or your CPA, because the funding this time has different stipulation and the money is going to be divided for different sectors. Now, the Democrats and Republicans can't play nicely together, and the Republicans have been fighting for a new stimulus package for a couple weeks now. However, the Democrats have been fighting back because they wanted special provisions. But as of today, the Senate passed the $484 billion stimulus, and I'm just going to get right into it and read you exactly what those sectors are underneath that amount. So there's a $310 billion for the PPP healthcare enhancement, $60 billion for community banks and small lenders, $75 billion for hospitals, $25 billion for testing of COVID-19, $60 billion for emergency disaster loans and grants. And that brings our annual deficit to about $4 trillion, including the previous $2.1 trillion stimulus. Now, the House and the President are expected to pass this stimulus package on Thursday. And under the new stimulus bill, there are certain provisions, such as larger companies are forbidden to actually participate in the program. And many large companies that actually received taxpayers' back loans may actually have to return that money. Now, the question arises, does the $310 billion fund for the PPP program actually give sufficient funding for small businesses due to the increase in demand. So if you're planning on applying for the loan, lesson learned from last time, apply early and make sure to pick a bank that's actually going to be processing those applications because not every bank will be doing so. Also, make sure you consult with your CPA to get all the documents that you need in time. I actually applied last time for the PPP loans and I was actually successful in securing loans for my business. I'm going to give you a list of those documents to make sure you gather them as soon as possible because based on my conversation with some lenders today, they're probably going to be accepting loans as early as Friday or Monday if the House and the President actually signs it into law by Thursday. So just because I don't want to misspeak, you guys gather the right documentation, I'm going to be reading this part out for you guys because it's quite a bit of documents. So make sure you gather your 2019 payroll costs and year to date payroll costs through February 15th of 2020. Make sure you have an accurate number for employees that you had as of December 31st, 2019. Also, number of employees as of February 15th, 2020. Make sure that you look at your tax returns and know what your NAICF code is. Make sure you gather your IRS Form 940 Employers Annual Federal Unemployment Tax Return Forms and make sure you also gather your IRS Form 941 Employers Quarterly Federal Tax Returns. Make sure you have a complete summary of your payroll for the year 2019 and a complete W-2 summary for any employees that you guys had for the year 2019. One thing that I found helpful is that I included my W-2 summary up to February 15th of 2020 when I actually applied for the loan. Finally, any employees that you have that you compensate them more than $100,000 in W-2 income, make sure you max them out at $100,000. Don't include anything above that. So that will come out to $8,333.33 that you guys can claim for the employee per month. Finally, a breakdown of all your employee benefits, including health care, paid vacation, make sure to include that. And make sure once you get your PPP money, 
that you expense that money on actual payroll costs up to 75% of the total PPP funds and the remaining 25% you can use on utilities or rent. But if you want it to be forgiven, you have to make sure as soon as you get your funding to bring any furloughed or laid off employees back immediately because you have to expense that money within an eight week period. Finally guys, this is breaking news. If you guys like this information, make sure to gingerly tap that like button, subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you guys next time.